Secondly, uh, I think there are roles that the church can play. Now, first of all, uh, they can help us understand, as the Lake Institute is trying to teach us, that money is a tool. Right, Bill? Uh, and that individuals within the congregation can be donors to a number of different uh, causes. Uh, I'm not saying this very well, but um, that's just point number one. Point number two, they can help a lot with neighborhood stabilization. If you have a nice, whether it's faith-based or not, but if you have a good neighborhood, you're going to probably have more jobs than if it's a neighborhood that's deteriorating. And a church is located in a neighborhood and can do that in its neighborhood, like what Westminster's done over here on the Near East Side. Uh, I think that's terrific. For years, they've done that. And that's just one, one example. Uh, they can also be advocates in uh, Camden, New Jersey, which is riven with drug dealers. Uh, and it's a, really a kind of a ghetto in some ways. The churches have been very bold over there in advocacy. Uh, now that may not have to do directly with economic development, but if you somehow can get people off of drugs and on the jobs, maybe it'll help. Uh, I don't, I don't know. That's a tough question. We got another question here. Uh, my name is Yasmin York, and I'm not really extending a question. I just want to tell you thank you during your years as a mayor. And I'm trying not to get emotional, but my grandmother had worked uh, for the state. She was a very big supporter of you. She had passed on in 2005, and because of many of your <coughs> policies and things that you had wrote out, she was able to go to school and finish her college degree at age 52. Oh, good. <laughs> And she was a big supporter of Mr. Hutnut. She, she uh, went to Martin Center University and her and all of her children were able to go to college and I am a product of many things that you have done. So I just came to say thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mel, I'm, I like to come from a long family of guilt for pastors and social activists to carry the, the torch forward and um, guilt in a good sense. Um, over those years, you, you mentioned your family, you mentioned abolitionists and women's suffrage, certainly the civil rights movement. And as social issues and social justice issues evolve, is the issue of hatred in politics a new social justice issue? And if it is, do we take, need to take the same kind of stand, whether Republicans or Democrats? In this particular case, I think it, it happens to be a Republican issue because of the, the meanness in the debates. But is that a social cause? And if so, does it need to be a, have a public stand from the clergy and other sectors? Well, I certainly think that any form of hatred uh, is an issue that has to be dealt with. And I, I've got to say, in all honesty, and I, I was trying to say it earlier, I feel as though uh, things have disintegrated since I was in Congress in terms of good feelings back and forth. Now, some people say, well, you go all the way back in history, look at some of the campaigns that were so ugly way back when, not, and beyond Lincoln, all the way back to Adams, Jefferson, and so forth. And the way they go at each other in the cartoons and so forth. But I think, and it pains me to say this, but I think that some of the words that we hear are uh, expressions of racial hatred in other forms. I could be wrong on that. Uh, Bill, you don't get to, to give the benediction. Uh, I want to uh, introduce our mayor, and our mayor of IUI, uh, our minister, <laughs> Carol Vance, uh, has a special um, presentation. Oh. But as, as Charles is getting up here, I want to say one thing in terms of how I describe a mayor and how I describe Bill. A mayor is a shepherd, and the shepherd has to be very protective of 
lead his flock and not leave anybody behind. And I think you did that well for 16 years. So, And I think what, what Charles is, is going to say is probably a, a good example and a good honor. Well, thank you, sir. Very good. I do think, uh, those of us in the room, if we didn't know before you walked in uh, why uh, Mayor Hudnett's reputation is as strong this many years later, you now know, for those of you who weren't here, uh, both the quickness of mind, the deepness of heart, uh, together with, frankly, the brilliance of governance uh, that you heard expressed. Uh, I'm here not to expound on that. Some of you know this right up front firsthand, uh, and you just saw an example of it. I am here as the IUPUI Chancellor, and one of the good things I get to do occasionally, and frankly very occasionally, is to award the Chancellor's Medallion. And we do this in recognition not only of great service as a mayor, but in this case, of course, in great contribution and leadership to this campus. You heard uh, Mayor Hudnut talk about a commitment to partnership. Those of you in the campus and some of you in the community know that one way I've learned to manage having the second longest name in America is that I remind people that we are three partners because there's always a focus on the two great university partners. And many people believe that Indianapolis is a locator. It is not. It's a partner with the other two. And we know the history of how Dick Luger, as mayor, gave this a push, a very un like push, as I've read the speech he gave. Uh, if you haven't, saying that you're going to take all the property from Indiana University and Purdue and create a new university isn't very Hoosier style <laughs> in its rhetoric. But creating that, and from the very beginning, we were partners. And it is so clear when I came here that that was the expectation. So the first week I met Bart Peterson, who comes in and says, you can't have a great city without a great university, and the life sciences are the most important thing you could do. And as I told him later, I wish I'd known him so well that I would have been appropriate to do what I felt like, which is to jump out of my chair and cheer. <laughs> because not all mayors, not all cities embrace their university. And that embrace from Mayor Hudna was in an incredible number of ways over many years, and I'm sure some things that aren't in the history books, as we always say, some of the toughest word shouldn't be in the history book. <laughs> but let me give you one example, and only one. We needed a library here. Our library building was modest, built in the 1970s, and we needed a new library. And fortunately, the president of the university supported that, and fortunately, the mayor of the city agreed to work with the CEO of the Lilly Company, Dick Wood, and to work with the chancellor at the time, Glenn Irwin, to raise the money to make it happen. And with the support of the endowment of Dick Wood and other people personally, and of many, many, we got that gorgeous library in 1991, which was the first technology-oriented library on a university campus. It was a pioneer. And now it's being reinvented again. But it was a mayor who was a part of that. With a university, and it made a difference because it was the first, frankly, serious building <coughs> on our campus. If you look at the campus from the Skyline Club, and you remove the things we've built in the last 10 years or so, the first monumental building is that one. And that was important because they were building for a university of 30,000, not one they had of 10.
10 or 15 times. And that kind of commitment. And so that's why we wanted to give the mayor the chancellor's medallion in recognition of his service and commitment to our campus. Mm -hmm. something I said when I was over here for, I don't know, a ribbon cutting or something, and John Ryan was the president of IU at the time, really did a double, double take because I, the phrase just popped into my mind, but I talked about the mutually fructifying influence of IU, PUI, and the city of Indianapolis. And I think even though it's a kind of an infelicitous phrase, it's true. <laughs> We uh, are very grateful for the presence of such a wonderful institution and to see how it's grown since I was here. My goodness, and everything that has to do with Indiana Health and the life sciences which Dave's running and so forth, it, it's, just, it's just marvelous. And I, I will treasure this, that's very kind of you. And uh, is Glenn Irwin still alive? He is, bless his heart. Well, I'll tell him I got this. <laughs> Really? He's still a member of Second Church. Okay, great. <laughs>